I'm Lydia Deacon and I work for West Country Rivers Trust. In this series of films we'll talk you through signing up to our West Country Citizen Science Investigation Scheme. Hello and I'm Simon Browning, I work at West Country Rivers Trust too and I'm just here to tell you a little bit about the CSI scheme. Uh, it started five years ago and our aim really is to get people out monitoring their local rivers all across the West Country. We have 850 plus water bodies to look after and a lot, a lot of those don't get any other monitoring if, if you don't do it. So um, yeah, please help out and watch these set of videos and uh, that'll help you get started. So when you come to do your dry run survey, the first thing you need to work out is whether your site is safe and accessible to access. So is it on a public pathway or a bridge crossing the river or is it on private land? And if it is on private land, either find somewhere that's more publicly accessible or if you can get landowner permission, that's fine. You next need to work out whether it's safe to take a full sample at the site. So you need to be able to take a bucket full of water either safely from a bridge or from the banks of the river. If all of those things are fine for you, for your site, then you can go ahead and carry out your dry run survey. All you're doing is filling out and following our CSI survey form. The first thing you'll do is fill out the survey details. First thing, serve a site name, what is your river or stream called? So I am here on the river Strat, so that's what I will write. The next thing you need to do is, is find out what your location name is called. You may well have been given this when you first signed up. Here I'm in Heel Valley. You also need your grid reference. This can be worked out from your phone, which might be able to give you a good reference, or alternatively, there are plenty of good websites online, or even you can just use our cartographer survey form, which will do it for you as well. We then need our date and time and your name. The next thing is our water body type. So you need to know whether it's a river, stream, lake, pond, or estuary, or it might be an, another. Uh, for this one, it's just a stream, and then we also need to look, work out whether we've had rain in the, in the previous 24 hours. So, so for that, we can look online or if we know, then we can use our own knowledge. The next part of our form is the general ecosystem observations. So this is merely just what you're seeing in our surrounding landscape. First of all, what is the dominant land, land use within 50 metres? So here, we can tick multiple boxes, however, I would limit it to what the dominant land use is. So for us, we've got woodland definitely on, on the right-hand side of our bank, so that's an obvious one. And then on the left-hand side of the bank, um, we just have green fields, so we have grassland pasture. So those are two very obvious things. Dominant bankside vegetation, so this again, you can click, click multiple here, but we try to encourage you to go for what is dominant, um, and for here it's trees and shrubs. Our problem plant species, uh, we have a number of options here for you which are known problem plants in the, in the West Country. However, if there is others that you know of and they're in your, in your local area, then please do put them in the other section. For us here, we have plenty of Himalayan balsam, so we can tick that one. We then move on to the wildlife spotted. Now, it's sometimes not so easy to spot wildlife when you're standing right by the river, because they will often be disturbed by your presence. However, we do encourage you just to sit and wait and watch and see what you can find at your sample site, because it, they often appear if you're nice and silent. We're now on to evidence of pollution. So first of all, we want you to have a look and see if there are any pollution sources within 50 metres of your sample site. It's important to emphasise here that we're looking at sources of the pollution. So if you can't see the source, then please do, do not tick anything. So for us here, we don't have any outfalls in our vicinity, so we can leave that. Um, we don't have any farmland or cattle accessing the river, so we're actually leaving ticking none for this site. For our evidence of recent pollution, this is what you can see in the river um, that might indicate that a pollution has gone through recently. Stuff like sewage fungus and, and litter, um, unpleasant odour, they're all indicators that, that something nasty has passed through. 
for us here it's none again. Lastly for our dry run we move on to our river channel observations. First of all we need an estimate of the width and the depth at our sample site. So it's important here to emphasise that it's just an estimation and we're not encouraging you to get in the river and do a very detailed width and depth. However, if you have a look at your river channel, have a look at, imagine a, a width of a metre ruler um, and work out how many, how many of those it will cover. And the same with the depth. Imagine that you're measuring depth at the far side, the middle and the near side and get an average of what you think it would be. We then go into the flow conditions. So this is how fast the river is moving that day. Um, and it gives you a little indication of what we're looking for when we're saying surging, steady, slow and still. It's to do with how fast you're walking. So you can almost walk along the river if you can to, to estimate that. We have our obstacles to fish or flow here as well. So if there is anything obvious, such as a debris dam or a weir, then you can pop that down here. Water level is quite a difficult one initially when you start your surveying um, and you might want to go on and have a look at how much rainfall you've had recently to work out whether you're a high average or low. Um, but the more you do your surveying, the more you'll understand your river and, and, and what, what state it's in. Finally, we'll have a look at the predominant substrate. So again, it's, it's important to emphasise here we're looking at the predominant, so you can only tick one. So just make sure you have a look around and it might be that you have gravels and stones and silt and mud, but what's the predominant one? And for us here, it's stones. The final section that we get you to fill out is our notes. This is actually a really important section. If you have any doubt about anything that you're seeing, pop it in the notes. If you've got something that, that might need explaining, then pop it in the notes. And all of those notes that you pop in and, and then input into Cartographer, uh, we will see when we approve your survey. So it's a really important section and one that we take note of. If you can, we ask you to take photos during your survey. One of them should be a fixed point photo of, of the same spot every time you survey. And that way we can have a look at change over time. The other sections all have a photograph next to them, the ones that we would like you to photograph. So for example in the problem plant species if you are seeing Himalayan balsam or Japanese knotweed for example you would take a picture um, so that we can have a look and verify it for you. Same with wildlife, obviously it's very difficult sometimes to capture wildlife so don't worry too much about that. Pollution is really important if you can get a picture of it to upload it so that we can verify and have a look and give us context to your survey. Anything else that you're not sure of, just take a picture of it and send it to us and we can have a look at and pass it on to anyone within the, width, the trust that might be able to help out. Once you've finished your dry run, you can then go back and upload it to Cartographer. Don't worry about the fact that you won't have water quality results, we know that, and it helps us identify you for the kit for the next month. So all you need to do is upload everything else that you've observed and your site name and location and then we'll be able to verify your survey and send you a kit out for your next month's survey.